When one thinks of ghosts, one imagines ruined castles or a lonely graveyard in the dead of night. But recently, psychic Sylvia Brown investigated a series of hauntings in a most unlikely location, an ordinary toy store in Sunnyvale, California. This is a place in which they had lost, or reportedly had lost, six managers. So out of desperation, they called me and said, would you please come in because we think we have a ghost. It's a story of unrequited love. And not like some of the violence we see at other, let's say, ghost stories. It's sad. It's, it's tragic. It was the new frontier of California, barely tamed by farms and orchards. The year was 1881, the season, spring. Yanni Janssen was a barely literate, emotionally disturbed farmhand who lived for just one thing, his desperate love for his employer's daughter. Elizabeth. Yanni, you have to stop writing me these letters. I don't mean to upset you. You have, and if I told my father, he would ask you to leave. But I love you. And I love someone else. I know I'm just a caretaker. I, I don't have very much to offer, but what riches I do have are in my heart. I don't love you, Yanni. You have to understand that. I, I don't mean to hurt you, but I'm getting married in six days, and it's best that you forget about me. Bye. Wait, wait, you don't know me. You barely knew I existed till I wrote those letters. How do you know you don't love me? I feel nothing for you. I won't rest until you marry me. Elizabeth, don't go. as time will. What was once an orchard became a busy toy store filled with the sounds of laughter, the hum of cash registers, and the presence of something else. Something that cannot easily be put into words. Hello? Is anybody there? There's something back there. Where? In the storeroom. It touched me, and it said something. Oh, what touched you? Excuse me, are you the manager? Yes. There's something wrong with your bathroom. The water comes on by itself. I turned the faucet off, but it came back on again. I think you need a plumber. Oh, I'll call one right away. Thank you. <laughs> May I please have the rest of the day off? Oh, whatever it is that scared you back there, I'm sure there's a logical explanation for it. Come on, I'll show you. Oh, it's only the storeroom. Nothing to be afraid of. Okay, guys, we got a little problem. 
so I am putting the storeroom off limits for the next couple of days. Rumor has it there's ghosts in the storeroom. Welcome to Ghosts R Us. Can I haunt you? <laughs> this is not a joke. And if you go around saying that there's a ghost, then we're liable to lose all of our customers. So until I can figure out exactly what this is, it's business as usual. Okay? Stack them like that? No. <sighs> Toys are us. Hi, it's me. Margie and I are at the school library. We're trying to figure this thing out. And we just found out some really interesting information. Uh, a long time ago, some people named Elizabeth and Martin Murphy lived here in Sunnyvale. They had this hired hand named Yanni Janssen, who was killed in an awful accident. The spooky part is that all this stuff happened exactly where the store is now. We also found a lady we think can help us. She's a psychic researcher. Her name is Sylvia Brown. She works with the police and really knows this area. She, she specializes in these kinds of cases. Great. She's supposed to be very professional. She may even know who the ghost is. We really think she can help us with I, I need her right away. All right. We'll get in touch with her. Uh-huh. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. From what I can tell, this has all the signs of a real haunting. What exactly is a haunting? It's spirits that don't know they're dead, or they resist going towards the light. Sometimes it's just unfinished business, or they just don't want to go. You see, in this case, Yanni Janssen is in a time warp, and he really believes that he's still part of this Martin Murphy ranch. So how long will he be doing this for? Months, years, maybe. Well, how do I get rid of him with a silver bullet? <clears throat> Well, really, we have to convince him that he's dead. That night, Sylvia Brown tried to summon the spirit of Yanni Janssen. Yanni, are you with us? Yanni, can you hear me? I can feel his presence now. It's getting stronger. He's coming towards us. I can see him. He looks a lot like Casper. He's coming around the corner now. Hello, Yanni. Come closer so we can see you. You're looking for someone. Her name is Beth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Murphy. Is this Martin Murphy's wife? No. This is his daughter. I'm sorry. No, she's not here. I know you loved her. She's very beautiful. Yes, I know how you can find her. 
She's on the other side. She's gone towards the light. You have to go towards the light, Yanni. You have to go towards the light to find Beth. Yanni, go towards the light. Thank you. Hopefully he's gone. Good night. Good night, good job. Hey, drive safe now, okay? Yanni's appearance in the 1982 seance, as evidenced by this famous infrared photograph, was not his last haunting. In January of 1991, we revisited the Sunnyvale Toys R Us, where employees, past and present, gathered to talk about their experiences in the intervening years. I heard my name being called, and, you know, I listened again, and I turned around, and I couldn't see who was calling me, and I said, wait a minute, she's not even working today, and I get back up and I'd start fixing the overstock again and I'd hear it again and then I'd hear my feel my hair being caressed and I just ugh. and the one little teddy bear instead of just falling down like it normally would went out into an arch down to the floor and I said to the manager you say what did that frighten you and he said it sure did put so now when I go into the stock room, I bless myself and I say, hi, Johan, it's only me doing a day's work. And upstairs we heard footsteps, um, very loud footsteps, thump, 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 thump. And uh, I looked around and counted one, two, three, four to make sure we were all there. And we were all there. And I asked one of the employees, I said, let's go upstairs and check it out. He's all, no way, I'm staying right where I am. I had gone in to use the restroom, was in one of the restroom stalls, heard the door open, heard the water turn on, kind of looked under, saw nobody in the restroom. The water turned off, the door opened, and I refused to use the restroom the rest of the six weeks I was here. <laughs> Someday, of course, he will leave. Maybe Beth will come for him, some loving entity will grab him. He'll go on to the white light, but until that time, he still walks up and down these halls looking for his lost love.